Now you mentioned briefly um, uh, Olympic lifting. Uh, we've had Lane Norton on the podcast several times. Lane obviously is a, a very successful power lifter. I think folks are kind of familiar with powerlifting having the three lifts, and it's really about um, you know these three lifts and what your total is in those three lifts. Can you contrast that a little bit with what Olympic lifting is? And I think more importantly, what are what are the physiologic differences between those two? And and I'll preface the question for the listener by saying. Again, even if you never plan to power lift or Olympic lift, this is going to be germane to our discussion. Yeah, so this is very, uh, we, there's actually a, a, fairly recently we published uh, the most in-depth analysis of muscle composition of Olympic weightlifters. So we can actually come back to that and we can talk more specifically about muscle composition. But in general, as some background, if you think about power lifting, uh, it's tricky because we're about to run some loops on your brain here. So technically you have force production, which is in the case of lifting, it is one rep max. So it's the most amount of weight you can lift one time, period. Not repetitions, not how many times you can do it, not how fast you can do it, just what can you get up? And the sport of power lifting, like what Lane does, it is three exercises, you know, the deadlift, bench, and the squat. And it's how much weight can you lift one time? You get a couple of tries at it, but it's that's effective what it is, right? So it's really an expression of pure strength. It's not really an expression of power at all because the speed component is very poor. In fact, the deadlift can take as long as you want. It doesn't matter. Did you get it up or did you not? Squat, et cetera. So we're already at the gates which confuse people because the name of the sport is called powerlifting despite the fact that it is not a power exercise nor is it determined by power. When you move over to Olympic weightlifting, it's the same basic idea. There are now two lifts instead of three. One lift being called the snatch and the other one's called the clean and jerk. It's called the clean and jerk because it has two parts. You clean it to your chest and then you jerk it over your head, but it's still considered one lift. Name of the game is still one rep max. So whoever can lift the most amount one time is the winner. And there's no repetition method to it. The difference is though, this is now more expression of power because although it's all about one rep max, it's difficult to lift something over your head as high as possible slowly. So there's a speed component required to the movements to perform, whether it's the clean or the snatch. And so it is an expression of tremendous strength, but there's a, a force or a velocity component to it. So when you multiply force by velocity, now you've got power. And so technically the weightlifters, Olympic weightlifters are significantly more powerful than a power lifter, despite the fact that power lifters in a sport called power lifting. So the confusion there is, and this gets worse when we start roping in things like strong men. So strongman is fantastic because again, you think strength and you think that must be the biggest expression of strength. Or in fact, it's not because strongman is contested over multiple repetitions. So it is an expression of very, very high strength repeated several times, very, very high strength, but it's not technically a true one rep max that actually goes to the back of the power lifters. So now you've already confused powerlifting, weightlifting and um, strongman. And none of those three things are actually explaining what they do correctly. Um, we can keep going on with multiple sports here, but this is this is the gen, the, the, the core of the problem. The reason you're, I think you're bringing this up is this also explains training adaptations. And this exactly, it's a perfect way to outline to understand what's happening. So if you train like a power lifter, that's probably represents the best way to get truly strong. If you train like a weight lifter, it represents the best way to get powerful. If you train like a strong man, it represents a fantastic way to get very, very strong and more what we'll say life functional movements. So walking, carrying, uh, lifting objects uh, and doing it probably multiple times. So the only difference between all those three and the last part I'll add to is with Olympic weightlifting, the amount of coordination required because you're gonna take a weight from the ground, throw it over your head and catch it over your head in a full squat. So when it comes to things like balance and proprioception and eccentric catching, it is uh, the advantage goes to weightlifters, you know, big time there. You're not gonna see that Powerlifting is very controlled. It's a very specific foot position, hand position. There's no movement, ideally. And it's very, um, it's typically you're minimizing range of motion intentionally because you want to minimize work, right? So work being force times distance. And if the game of the game is who can create the most force, you can minimize the distance, you're going to win. And that's why they take those funny positions. That's why Lane has both of his feet six miles apart and, and does a, he calls it a deadlift, even though it's a fake movement. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Lane's, Lane and I go back many, many years. So um, he would laugh at that joke, I promise. <laughs> so 
that's the basic foundation of of the difference here. You have a very sports specific application for powerlifting. Weightlifting is very sports specific, but it's a much greater range of motion, has those other components, and strongman is is kind of addition. I didn't know I know you didn't ask about strongman. No, no, but no. I but I, I, I kind I, of rounds the loop yep, I love that you brought that in. Um before I go into my next question, let's put one more little bow on that. We've talked a lot about who's the strongest, who's the most powerful, who has the most functional strength. Uh, you want to throw in a little bit on hypertrophy within the, that trio? Yeah, great. So you can actually add a couple of more scenarios here. Hypertrophy would be more of your bodybuilding, which Lane has also done. Holly, uh, I think you just had yeah. Holly on, yeah. right? So Holly can smash with physique, whether you want to call it bodybuilding or general physique or any stuff. It's simply improving um, generally leanness and total muscle mass. And then there's a component of symmetry and shape, things like that, that don't really matter for this conversation. So if you add that on top of it, now you're talking about who can optimize muscle size as well as leanness, which is really, really important with no consideration for function. doesn't matter if you're strong or fast or athletic or any of those things. And so there, in fact, this is it's so interesting that you started the conversation like this because this is day one of my strength and conditioning courses, the academic semester. I spend the first week actually just on going over these different categories of sport because it does exactly like what you're setting up here. It outlines exactly how to train. And the last two pieces, just to throw this in there, would be actually, if you think about the competitive circuit training sports. Like CrossFit, for no, example. Totally. Yep. No offense. I'm just meaning yeah, yeah. it as a sense of they are very strong. They have a lot of muscle, but they're not nearly as strong as power lifters, you know, like yep. as a general statement, they're not nearly as strong as world's strongest men, but they do a lot more repetitions. And so a world's strongest man is going to win an event doing something like five to 15 repetitions, like something, you know, kind of depending and CrossFit, you might have to do 90 reps in a given workout, like way more. And so it's way higher up that scale of, of number of repetitions. They do some, of course, that are one repetition, but you get the point. It's just like a very crude explanation of what's happening. Uh, a lot of function, a lot of different movements and a lot of workouts repeated in the same day. And so it's a very different test of recovery over three or four days of just brutal onslaught um, and asked to do things in a lot of different areas and a lot of different energy systems and movement patterns and things like that. So it's a really interesting test of, of total physical fitness. And the last one that I like to throw in there is either, is basically track and field. And now you have the truest expression of, of velocity. Uh, these are the people who are going to be the best at getting you truly fast. And so if you think about this now, what do you need to have as a functional human being for lifespan and longevity or sport? And if you want to think about this in a spectrum, how do I get absolutely fastest? How do I get the most powerful? How do I get strong? How do I add muscle size slash lose body fat? How do I improve my muscular endurance? And now how do I improve my cardiovascular and metabolic endurance? This is now occupied in all of those sports. And so we can just look at them as a model for training and saying the best in the world at getting stronger have been doing this. The best in the world at getting faster, peak speed. The best in the world um, at, at getting able to recover multiple days in a row. Okay, we have, so we have different models of, of that. So that is a nice foundation for all training, really. <laughs>